Welcome back to the Penis Project, a.k.a. the Cream Spot. I'm one of your co-hosts, five times, five times, five times world time, world heavyweight champion of the world, the delicious Nicolicious. I'm here with my my favorite friend in the whole entire world. Five times, man. That's pretty good. Uh, well, you could, it's probably a lot more. Like Ric Flair, it's probably <laughs> honestly been a lot more than that. But that's, yeah. Being modest, that's fine. Yeah. It's Rob Dog, guys. Hey, what's going on? We have a very important message for you, all of you this week. We're late with the episode. Oh, yeah. That's the message. <laughs> Some guy wrote us and said, I want to drink your cum. Where's the new episode? <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's not fucking weird at all. Here we are in the middle of the week. It's Wednesday evening. Um, I'm fighting through. Rob said he's like, I think I'm sick. And I said, I think I'm sick, too. So both of us are kind of yeah. fighting through some seasonal changes. Hopefully it's not COVID-19 again. I don't think it is. We both came back from a little trip, but I think we're okay. But the President of the United States <laughs> of America said it's not that bad. <laughs> so He's a scientific marvel. He's a fucking college dropout. <laughs> Did he graduate from college? I don't know. I don't know. Fuck, I don't know. Who knows? But here we are. We're doing it for you guys. We're doing it up. We're doing it real big. We're doing it real sleek and smooth. We got a lot of cool. This is a fun episode we got planned for you because we wanted something we could kind of free flow with, something that didn't involve much research. If that's if you get my drift right there. Yeah, we had a we both had a busy weekend, so we weren't here. We were just kind of flying by the Whew. seat of our dick. Rob went to Nashville. Yeah, I went to Pigeon Forge in Gatlinburg. Mm-hmm. I had a lot of fun. I do not recommend taking children on vacations. Yeah. It fucking sucks. We didn't. And it costs a lot of money. Oh, yeah. No doubt. It was. I have one very small child, one close to being small child, and then one preteen, and it cost me $100 to take them to breakfast every day. Ooh. I was there for four days. So you do the arithmetic on that. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I did steal pizza from one establishment. It was kind of out of my control, but they handed me the pizza and said, are you Nick? I said, yes. They said, have a great night. And I said, I will. And I walked straight out the fucking door with two extra large pizzas and a salad you didn't and lie. some daddies. <laughs> and you definitely didn't lie. You are Nick. <laughs> and they said, have a good night. And that's usually the end of a conversation for me. That's when I walk away. You say, have a good night. <laughs> when I tell my wife, hey, have a good night, I'm rolling over and I'm going to sleep. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's what happened. Yeah. I uh, didn't have to pay for kids, but I did have to pay for myself and my love of alcohol. Alcohol, yeah. But it was it was a good time. What did you think of Nashville, man? I loved it. I thought it was great. Uh, we were smack dab in the middle of downtown where our hotel was at. And we awesome. Were, we were a block away from anything that we wanted to do. At the most, like, well, where we were at, it was still kind of, it's got different quarantine, or not quarantine, but different um, rules, so, like, everything would close at, yeah. like, 11, okay. but about 10 minutes away on the other side of Nashville, everything stayed open until 3. <laughs> Goody! So, we, we get to walk around, we get to do the bars, I got to see uh, you know, homeless people come out in flocks during the night. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, it's crazy. There's big pile of creamy shit in one of the corners of a, <laughs> of a building <laughs> it was pretty bad what do you think of authentic nashville hot chicken it was delicious was it it destroyed my asshole the is it better than kfc yeah <laughs> it yeah i uh i went real hot with it so it was a carolina reaper sauce oh no and, there's uh, no reason for that yeah and it's a it was like a dry rub and then it had sauce on it. That's so what I did in the bathroom earlier with a dry rub. <laughs> dry rub. <laughs> Those are always painful. <laughs> yeah. It but was. yeah, man, it, it fucked me up. But it was delicious. There was I don't remember what the other place we went to, but there was a wing place that we went to that I told you about that had the best <laughs> wings I've ever had yeah. in my life. Rob wrote me and said, I had the best wings in the world. I said, Were they better than Domino's? And this <laughs> dude really got mad at me. He said, What the fuck are you talking about, man? He said, Bruh. That's all he wrote back was bruh. <laughs> dude, like I knew <laughs> I knew the second we walked in, because we got the our, the bartender at our hotel recommended it to us, and I'm like, okay, cool. So we went there, and I knew the second I walked in when we were the only white people in that place, yeah. I was like, this food is going to be the shit. Yeah. And it was it was the best. White people don't know how to season food. They do not know how to season food at all. 
I, I it's can, so bad. I can get down with chicken wings, man. Oh, dude, I, can, I, fuck, I fucks with them. I want to go to Nashville and try the chicken wings yeah. for sure. Dude, they're good. I'll have to figure out where we went and I'll, I'll have to let you know because it's a, it's a must stop. Maybe if you weren't such a slobbering fucking drunk, you'd know where you were sometimes and you wouldn't have to. I just to- drove, man. That was, <laughs> <laughs> that's all I did was drive. I don't remember where the hell they told me to go. I just went. Oh, I, love, and I went to, uh, yeah, Pigeon Forge, Gatlinburg. That's a, that's a million hours of fun jam packed into one small yeah. spot right there. Yeah, it's really touristy, but it's it's a lot of fun. We're gonna a lot of shit to do. We went to the crime museum, the Alcatraz East Crime Museum. They had um, OJ's Bronco in there. Really? Yeah, dude. that's pretty sweet. The Bronco and the Chase. Nice. Which is super. It's still pristine. It's perfect, man. They had Ed Gein's. Or I think it's. Is it? No, not Ed Gein. Who's the one? The Gacy, the one that dressed oh, yeah. up. Clown. They had his clown costumes <clears throat> hanging. That's up. pretty cool. They had Jeffrey Dahmer's uh, property transfer slips from prison, so it had his his, his actual signature. Mm-hmm. And they had some cards with Charles Manson signatures on there. Nice. And I think uh, I'm going to post those pictures on the Ohio page tonight from all the pictures I took. That'd be cool. What I am going to do right now, I'm going to hit pause, I'm going to hit save, and I'm going to go to the driveway, and I'm going to get some nasal spray, because I feel it coming on hard and fucking fast. Hell yeah. Man. Um, I feel it. I feel it. It's not your wiener. Hold on a second. Okay, I got some nose spray, so it it should slowly start to get back to normal. I'm like I'm fucking hot boxing right now. Just, <laughs> my, I'm so just messed up. I can feel the burn in my throat. Okay. We got some Patreon subscribers. Heck yeah. Some new ones, starting off with Brian Condick. Uh, hold on. Brian Connick. Brian, thank you for your Patreon pledge. Uh, Zero Kakuza. Kazuka. Yakuza. I love that bubble gum, by the way. <laughs> Jeremy Smith. Thank you, Jeremy. J. Romy, for your generous Patreon pledge. Scott Dean. Thank you very much, Scotty. Allison. Mega. Nipples. <laughs> Wait, I, don't I don't know. <laughs> Allison Borders. Thank you, Allison, for your Patreon pledge. Uh, Joey Conway Titty. Thank you very much, Mr. Conway Titty. I just saw the guy right there, and I was hoping he was a puffy nipple guy, and I just wished for Megan puffy nipples on that man. Because <laughs> we're trying to change some stuff around here, you okay. know? Okay, yep. Double M, Mitch Martin. Six-time world heavyweight champion of the world. Mitch, thank you. <laughs> Second time in a row I get this one. No. Well, <laughs> Is this they, a repeat? They repledged, but they fixed it because we said, we don't. you're missing a uh, a comma. We don't know if you're saying fuck Biden okay, or gotcha. fuck Trump. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's fuck Biden, Trump 2020. Okay, <laughs> there you go. With proper Trump 2020. With proper uh, punctuation there. Perfect cursive <laughs> francesca zadra thank you francesca for your patreon pledge and adam sipe i if think sipe you would like to hop on the patreon come train go to patreon.com slash brian podcast for only 99 cents 99.999 cents per month you get free ad free content what happened to us at a very young age that caused us to be so fucking jaded and warped? I don't know, Rob, but here we are making a podcast about all the crazy things in the entire world. We've been in a bit of a rut the past couple months trying to find good topics, stuff mm-hmm. to just jump out. And then I was just sitting there thinking, and I bounced off your head. What if we do some, like, what are you called? School heart, schoolyard rumors. Mm-hmm. And I remember a lot of these from when I was a kid. There was, um, we polled our Facebook friends and we said, what are some rumors, some different kind of myths and legends that you remember from the schoolyard yeah. from when you were a kid? And people did not disappoint. They came back with some really, really good stuff. Oh, yeah. And if you sent us something good, we're going to we're gonna use it here. Some of the stuff does have some research that went along with it, so that's yeah. good. A lot of it's from Snopes.com. Hell yeah. A lot of people don't believe in Snopes. Nah, it's okay. It's like the Wikipedia of is this true or not. Of the internet. It's one of the first things you go to. Yep. This was the one that made me think of this topic altogether. Um, When I was a kid, let's say, let's get in our wheelhouse for a moment. You and I 
we started elementary school. I started in 1991. I'm sure you were somewhere about right for you as well. Yeah, because we we were in the same grade, so yeah. I'm assuming I didn't I get was, held back or anything. I so was yeah. retarded. I got well. Yeah. I was I was a year faster. So right. I was much like a. They called me a star child. They wasn't. They weren't quite sure if I was going to be advanced. Mm-hmm. But then there was the probability that I was going to be really slow and fall behind everybody and kind of fumble my way through school and just get by on personality alone. It was the latter of the two. I conned a middle school science teacher. I had a 10% on the last day of the semester. She said, if you stay in for your lunch break and give me a report on something, I'll see if I can't get this closer to a D for you. And I just sat there and I talked the fucking sandals off of her. Okay. (laughs) And I made, I took two, two liters and I taped them together and made a fucking tornado machine. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. And then I wrote about two sentences on tornadoes that I plagiarized directly from the Encyclopedia Britannica, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. When I got my report card, I had an A. I went from a 10% to an A just by being, asking her about horses, asking her if, like, she thought horses had big dicks, <laughs> asking her questions, you know. I think you know what science teacher I'm talking about. I do. She was the coolest lady in the yep. entire world. Yep. Man, and she didn't take no shit. Unless it was for me, then she would take all the shit. She'd be like, what the fuck ever, you know? Yep. And I'm still just great friends with her to this day. And if you ask her about it, she would be like, I got no fucking idea what you're talking about. Because <laughs> it's probably borderline illegal. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I'd say so. But here it's okay. we are. Yeah. We're still surviving. I forgot to do a, um, an article, article for this one. Let's oh, yeah. see if... Uh, I, uh, I also had something I thought of. Well, not really that I thought of, but something I was going to mention is that... a. Uh, I was at Chipotle yesterday getting dinner. Okay. And some random guy was in there. I was wearing, I just looked at your shirt and I was wearing that same exact shirt. Oh, really? Yeah, one of our Bro Ohio shirts. And the guy was like, Oh, Bro Ohio podcast, that's awesome. I was like, Oh, yeah, man, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, yeah, I like it too. Did you tell him it sucked? No. Or- so if you were that guy, yeah, it was me you were talking to. Hey, what's up, guy? It was the real Rob Diggity Dangle Dog. Yeah. That was in my local one right by my house. We have um, a. I think that's the first time anybody's ever said anything to me about my shirt. Like this happened to me a couple times. Besides, I mean, like besides asking me about it, my wife would be like, "Don't flatter yourself, this <laughs> shit." It's pretty cool. One, let's see. I'm gonna go through the funny articles here real quick. See sure. if I can find one. Oh, god. Okay, that's funny. Cause that's the one that caught my attention too. Drunk man has 13 year old driving to get ice cream <laughs> charged with endangering a child. Why does he look like? Uh, Aldi version of Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> Aldi version. What's wrong with Aldis? <laughs> Nothing at all, but... Javier Eduardo Martinez Aguilar, 42 of Lubbock, Lubbock, Lubed Up, has been indicted, indicted on a charge of endangering a child criminal n- neglect, according to a police report on September 9th, 2020, around 6.15 p.m. Police pulled over a vehicle for a traffic violation in the 2500 block of Avenue Q. The officer asked the driver for a license and proof of insurance. The driver, a 13-year-old boy, told the officer (laughs) he did not have a license. (laughs) I know there's people that listen to this show that have done this shit before. Mm -hmm. She told him her age. The officer asked why she was driving. She said she was driving a family member to get ice cream because he was drunk, according to the police report. The family member, uh, Javier Edouard Martinez Aguilar, 42 of Lubac, said that he had gone out to get some ice cream. <laughs> when the officer asked for his ID, he fumbled with his wallet and struggled to get the ID out. But he was uh, he was eventually arrested. My wife used to do the same exact thing with her dad. Her dad would be <clears throat> drunk and would need her to drive him up to the... Uh, to the gas station up the road so he could get more beer when she was like 13 or 14. Would she do it? Yeah. Fuck yeah. He Paddled would he would, he would lay in the back of their 16 passenger van and just sleep. Uh, uh, <laughs> she would just drive him up there. <laughs> That's good stuff, man. Yeah. My dad would not do shit like that with me because he knew I was stupid and I couldn't pull it off. Uh, my dad never drank, dude. He only dr- I only remember probably on one hand him ever drinking when growing up, but I knew when that motherfucker drank, yeah, he was calling dinosaurs <laughs> when he got home because he would just be like, Brrr! and that's one thing I've inherited from my father yeah. is the pure 
volume I can project when I am vomiting. And my mom has this story that she tells that he was puking the night after drinking. And Uh I was outside the bathroom door. I was mocking him. I was only about four years old. And I was just like, (laughs) oh, you sick dad. And she falls apart when she tells that story. (laughs) We'll have to call. We'll have to give it a few weeks. Yeah. And then call her because she's getting really suspicious of our phone calls. Every every time you talk to her. She doesn't talk to us. She won't talk. (laughs) Even when I call her on my lunch break or something to say hi. You know, she's got a new car. She's really excited. She called me. I called her back. She's Mm -hmm. like, hello. And then usually she's so happy to talk to me. But she's like, hello. (laughs) She's just suspicious. And then she won't say anything. I'm like, mom, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not doing it. Like Jesus. it's one o'clock in the afternoon. Chill the fuck out, lady. You know, it's like ten o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Anything where you record before noon is terrible. So yeah, she should know. She should know that. Okay, this is the story that started it all from when I was a kid. I remember this. This, you know, I've talked about this kid before. His name was Ryan. He's a felon now. He's been to prison and jail a lot. But okay, he was a foster kid that I went to school with. And any time there was weird, fucked up shit circulating the school, yeah, or I had questions about bitches and hoes, whatever I had questions about, I would always go to Ryan because he had he just like lived hard, man. He had a hard life. He was in foster care, but he knew everything. Mm-hmm. And I've referenced it before on the show. I didn't know what a pimp was. And my buddy's like, man, you ain't no pimp. I said, I am a pimp. And then we kind of got in a fight. You know, I'm like, I'm a pimp. He's like, you're not a pimp. And then he went to lunch, and I kind of hung back, and I got up, and I walked real slow over to Ryan. I said, hey, Ryan, what's a pimp? He said, and he had like a little, he did the thing where he talked out the side of his mouth a mm-hmm. little bit. And I said, hey, Ryan, what's a pimp? He said, that's the king of the hose. <laughs> <laughs> I said, all right, dude. And I still had no fucking idea what I was talking about yeah, at that yeah. point. So that's um, that's Ryan. He still has a special spot in my heart. God love him <laughs> and all the crack that he's smoked over the years. But this is the rock star stomach pump legend. <laughs> Here we go. Urban legend describes a rock star collapses at a party and has a pint of semen pumped from his stomach. <laughs> I hate when that happens. The claim... Uh, this is from Snopes.com. <laughs> no, you when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> After collapsing at a post-concert party, a rock star was pushed to an emergency room where doctors pumped a pint of semen out of his stomach. Um, Snopes.com says, good legends never die. They simply morph to fit the changing times. Way back when, in less sexually open times, the guys in high school who weren't getting any, which was most of them, would tell salacious and spiteful tales about these uh, symbols of youthful sex- sexual desire. Cheerleaders. If you couldn't have them, the next best thing was to d- dismiss them as tawdry sluts of easy virtue, so lacking in moral... Why the fuck wrote this? Some of goddamn... <laughs> uh, incel wrote this shit. Um, let me scroll down here. Uh, there's... So... It, the theory goes that Rod Stewart was the initial was the original name of of the legend, but the the legend has been attributed to Rod Stewart, Elton John, who was the one that I heard this rumor mm-hmm. about. David Bowie, Mark Almond, who definitely had a pint of semen. Pumpkins. I was going to say, literally, could be any of these guys. <laughs> Who's Mark Almond, Mick Jagger, Andy Warhol, Jeff Beck, John Bon Jovi, the drummer from John Bon Jovi. <laughs> <laughs> Sucks to be that guy. <laughs> just known as the drummer. I'm just the fucking drummer, dude. <laughs> Doesn't even have his name in there. The lead singer for New Kids on the Block, the Bay <laughs> City Rollers. What? All the of them? Bay- Holy, that's a lot of semen. Uh, it also reached out and touched Alanis Morissette, Lil' Kim, uh, Foxy Brown, Britney Spears, and Fiona Apple. The amount of ejaculate retrieved from the star stomach is often specified, such as seven ounces, one gallon, or ten gallons. <laughs> Uh, ten gallons. I had ten gallons of jizz and pumped out of my butt. <laughs> Jeez, Louise. Listen, dude. How many uh, dicks does it take to make ten gallons of cum? <laughs> I can do it right now. I need milk, though. I get, <laughs> oh God. I uh, Gatorade. I'm gonna be de- dehydrated <laughs> at that point. So this is a a rumor that circulated on the schoolyard when mm-hmm. I was a kid. It said, um, "I'd be like, hey man, did you hear Elton John had to have a pint of cum? It was usually a pint." Yeah. Of cum, and I didn't even know what cum was when I first heard this. <laughs> I still, I didn't even know what cum was until I was about 16 until I finally started producing that shit myself. 
Uh, says nowadays this legend keeps resurfacing, attributed to whatever singer, male or female, is currently disliked for being uh, too popular or too lightweight or too cute. I really do not like the author of this article, the way they they worded all this stuff. And I'm thinking about this. I'm trying to do the physics and the science behind this. Okay. Ten gallons. God, so much. I think they could probably get ten gallons of chili dog sauce out of my <laughs> stomach right now if they really scrape the sides. Because I know that's I know it's in there. I just don't know what quantity, but I do know there's a lot of chili dog sauce in my stomach. Ten gallons, jeez, Louise, that's a lot, man. But here's the thing: I don't think there's no easy way to say this. I've never had a, officially had a man jizz in my butt before. <laughs> I don't know if there's a, like a PC way to say that, or if there's a fun way to say that. I've never officially had a man produce jism in my rectum. Yeah. I can imagine that it probably feels great. <laughs> probably a little yucky. I don't know. <laughs> but if it if I do find myself in a situation where I'm face down or however I'm taking it, flat on my back, with my, you're not going to be able to get my legs behind my ears. Because face I, down, ass up. Maybe. I just don't bend like that. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Whatever. But if I got a big man that for some ungodly reason, reason can produce a pint of cum, first we got to get him a job. Um, in yeah. Las Vegas somewhere making movies. Like a, or like a freak show or something. Yeah. Come watch The Amazing Jizzing Man. <laughs> they call me Jack the Jacker. <laughs> they, get, they give you like a raincoat. <laughs> Everybody in the front row gets like... A, Goggles? Yeah, it's like the blue man group. You go to see them, they give you a raincoat. Like a fucking... Uh, what, what was his name? The guy that used to smash fucking Gallagher. watermelons? <laughs> Gallagher. looks like a Gallagher show. People in the front row with fucking... It looked like you're about to ride over the cliff at Niagara. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I can imagine if I was, um, but I think I would probably be a bear anyways. But if someone was <laughs> produced a pint of jism in, in my rectum, I would probably just go to the bathroom and <laughs> just squirt it all out of my butt. Poop it all out. Just poop it all out yeah. immediately because I don't think that, uh, I don't think it just goes up inside of you and just sits there in a no fucking police. fire truck coming by. My wife and I have been together for a long time, mm-hmm. okay? Haven't pulled out of it in a really longer, longer time. <laughs> and uh, never has she been like, I gotta go to the doctor and get this stuff taken out of me. I don't think yeah. it works like that, so. I don't either. I think that... Um, it's gravity. It'll eventually come down. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would make for an easier poop. Right. And I think we we asked that question before. We said, if you're uh, someone that's had jism inside of your butt, does it make it easier to poop? And then we had a couple guys right back like, yes. It does make it a lot easier. Makes sense to me. It it seems like it would definitely make things a lot easier. Yeah, sure. definitely. Probably feels great. <laughs> I'm going to have to try it. So I'm going to call that rumor false for sure. Snopes.com said it was false as well. Okay. I'm going to call that one false because I don't think that um, it says never mind that the amount of semen supposedly pumped out of the subject generally exceeded the capacity of even the largest of stomachs would have required continuously performing blowjobs. Oh, okay. So we're talking about taking the ass. This is from sucking penises. You got to swallow. You got to swallow it. This is, not, this is not shot into your butt. Okay. This is a swallow job. <laughs> swallow job. Would have required continuously <laughs> performing blowjobs for about three days straight to ingest that semen in any quantity. <laughs> Ah, it isn't toxic, and that someone who ingested too much would at worst feel <laughs> nauseated. Can you imagine having an upset tummy from swallowing too much gum? Just burping as a bubble comes out. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Ugh, sorry, that was a jizz and burp. <laughs> yeah, I would just imagine you just throw up, man, at that yeah, point. Right. Just stick your finger down the cum highway and make it all <laughs> come back out. Oh, man. Uh, in his 2012 autobiography, singer Rod Stewart attributed the connection of his name with his legend to r- rumors spread by a disgruntled assistant. Stewart claims his one, and this is Rod Stewart, his one-time sidekick, Tony, Tony Toon. <laughs> if you're hanging out with someone named Tony Toon, you got to check yeah. your fucking shit. But, uh, made up this tale after he was fired for taking a male lover back to a hotel room he was sharing with the star's seven-year-old stepson. Ooh. Toon accompanied Stewart and his then-wife, Alana, on a vacation in Hawaii, and the hotel was overbooked. The assistant and Alana's son wound up sharing a room. 
Stewart explained, quote, we had our, we, I don't even know what Rod Stewart sounds like. We had our children, Sean and Kimberly, in a room with us, and we asked Toon to share a room with Alana's son, Ashley, who was then seven. Toon, of course, couldn't resist pulling some bloke in the bar that he, oh, he's Australian. Australian. And that evening, and took him back to the room. I fired him in the morning. So, uh, Toon's revenge was absolutely inspired. He fed the press a story in which, as a consequence of an evening spent orally servicing a gang of sailors in a gay bar, Ooh, a gang <laughs> in San Diego, I've been required to check into a hospital emergency room to have my stomach pumped. I have never orally pleasured even a solitary sailor, let alone. A ship's worth in one evening, and I have never had my stomach pumped either of naval issue semen or of any other kind of semen. With minor variations, the story has stayed with me ever since. Say what you like about Tony Toon, and God rest his soul, but he was good at his job. Whatever that job was. <laughs> Obviously sucking off a bunch of sailors. Thanks, Rod, for clearing that one up for us, yeah. pal. This uh, next one, uh, I'm going to let Rob Dog take it from, I think you can probably speak from the top of this one as well. Yeah, well, this, the hyperlink is the same article as the one before, so. Oh, it is? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, anywho, I think this is one of the ones that, even whenever you first mentioned this, this was the one that initially jumps right into my mind. This is another one, which the other one is an, uh, oh, yeah, you do have the other one underneath here, too. And then there's another one that I thought of that we don't have on here, but, anywho, this one, uh, the next two actually are involving Mr. Marilyn Manson. <laughs> um, <laughs> the first one, and I think the most popular one being that um, he had one of his ribs removed or some of his ribs removed just so he could suck his own dick. Oh, okay. Um, I remember hearing about this, you know, back in the day. Yeah, it was... Um I don't remember. I think I was probably about middle school, but isn't it crazy yeah. how um, I felt so fucking edgy when I got a Marilyn Manson cassette disc? Yeah. I was so just like, we're all stars now. <laughs> I was just ready to, to fuck the world. Antichrist I superstar. I didn't care anymore, dude. I, yeah. I changed, okay? <laughs> I'd start tucking my winger back anywhere I went just so I, so yeah, man. I could look like him. I think that um, as a, I'm, a, I'm happy that as a society, we have grown so much more tolerant right. to, to people that are not like us, people that are different from them. And I'm, I applaud us as a society for becoming a lot more receptive to this stuff. But someone having some ribs cut out yeah. so they could suck their own dick was, <clears throat> at that time, that was completely taboo mm -hmm. and completely crazy, which fell right in line with the way Marilyn Manson was. Yeah, it was definitely believable, especially during that era, because, I mean, he had the one music video where he was pretty much like a fucking mannequin body. And, uh, yeah, yeah, dude. It was, it, I mean, and his theatrics, anyways, have always been really crazy, so it kind of seems like that's something that he would do. Yeah. And I think that's why it held up for so long. Um, but I've always, I've always enjoyed his... The, uh, the theatrics that come along okay. with him and his music, it's its perfect. I watched... Um, like, the name Marilyn Manson? Yeah. Like, it's so fucking good. It's theatrical, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's... they. I remember him saying, like, when I was little, it blew my mind, because he was, like, pretty much just said that that's where the name came up from. It was just, like, they, he thought of pretty much the most loved and most hated person that he could think of, and yeah. Marilyn Monroe and Charles Manson. It's and perfect, there you go. Dude. It's so fucking good. And whenever uh, I just wrapped up watching Sons of Anarchy... Mm -hmm. And he he's plays a white supremacist in I think the last the last season I think and dude he's just got um he's got acting skills the dude can act he's super intelligent right and, super intelligent and that inspired me to watch some of his interviews and he is just a fucking like out of this realm thinker just so yeah. much he's so far <laughs> beyond my level of thinking yeah he's done a bunch of interviews even on like like msnbc or cnn or whatever it is and like it just like listening to him talk it's kind of like mind-boggling like you wouldn't expect him to be so smart yeah dude he's highly intelligent this yeah. article here from clickhole.com says <laughs> everyone knows a long-standing rumor about marilyn manson getting a rib surgically removed so he could suck his own dick but after refusing to discuss the matter for years the horror rock 
superstar has finally broken a silence. Marilyn Manson has revealed that he actually got all of his ribs removed in order to suck someone else's penis. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, he says, the notion that I'd get my ribs removed to suck my own dick is utterly batshit, he continued. <laughs> like, come on, how gullible do you got to be to believe such a ridiculous rumor? If I want to get my dick sucked... I have an iguana for <laughs> I have an iguana for that. <laughs> I don't I don't need to do it on my own. You'd have to be a seriously disturbed freak to suck your own pud. <laughs> I don't know if this is fucking satire or not, this article here, but suck your own pud. <laughs> <laughs> oh That's man. Such a, there was one article where he actually um a fan submitted a question to ask uh, the following of Manson. For years, it was rumored that you had a rib removed to achieve self fellatio. Obviously, that's nonsense, but have you ever tried to suck your own cock? Manson responded as, responded as such, wow. Does Keith get money if I answer this? He asked. No comment, Keith, you cunt. <laughs> and he wouldn't answer the question love it. about the ribs. And it just goes with the mystique of Marilyn Manson. And yeah. We're all stars in the fucking dope show, buddy. <laughs> For real. And this one used to really upset me. The next one about him. Yeah, and I remember this one, too. He, um, there was a, a rumor that he... Let's hear if we've heard this the same way, because I haven't read this article about... <clears throat> this claim, Marilyn Manson has taken to slaughtering puppies... Uh, as part of a stage show, okay. this this is what this is what I heard, and I don't know if this is exactly what the article says. This is the, this looks like a chain email from like the night, right? Right. What I heard, and I think this probably goes along with the the times that the outrage of people because uh, this was a really different different time. Whenever the edginess and the parental the advisory, he, the way he was was not accepted. Yeah, and it yeah, it was just a completely different time. I mean, this is like I said, whenever we were people just assumed that anything that was like dark and bizarre was super not scary of god and not of christian descent yeah from what i remember hearing he would have a bag of puppies that he would pretty much throw out in the yeah. crowd during each show and then he wouldn't start until they were all killed yeah I, that's this that's exactly the way i remember okay that. okay yeah this uh says dear whomever may read this today is march 30th 1999 and today i heard about something that has to that has to stop you all know of the sick person named Marilyn Manson. I know someone who went to one of his concerts. He is abusing animals. He threw several puppies into the crowd before the show, and then he told the crowd that he would not start the show until the pups were killed. So, in conclusion, several puppies are killed at each Marilyn Manson concert. This is a sick thing that has to stop now, and we are the only ones who can stop it. This guy is a sick person. I'm sending this to everyone, and I'm like every and then the number one on my buddy list. And you could please send it to this uh, to at least ten people. It's literally just like an difference. aim away message. It is. <laughs> if people realize what this sick man is doing, then less people will go to his concerts. And then when nobody comes, he can't kill any more puppies. So please, by sending this, you are saving the lives of a couple puppies. And let me just tell you that if you don't send this, you are a self-centered loser. <laughs> Uh, that was, uh, there was also, it's, it sounds like one of those fucking weird Facebook posts that says like, it'll have a picture of Jesus and it'll be like, I bet you won't share this cause you're afraid to have a picture of Jesus. You're on afraid your- of Jesus. <laughs> you won't share this picture of a dog with ham on his face. <laughs> yeah, dude, I love those. This dog lost his face in a fire. It's a gold retriever that <laughs> slice of ham? fucking honeysuckle on his face. <laughs> Virginia Gap. <laughs> Sweet honey ham, yeah, laying <laughs> on his face. There was also a similar article that was circulating before this. There, the rumor was Alice Cooper and Ozzy Osbourne did the same thing. Okay, and they would throw a puppy into the audience, and they would instruct the fans to break its legs. And then the Alice Cooper was said to have had tossed a bag full of kittens to his fans, instructing them to tear the cute little fur balls apart before he'd go on with the show. So it's just a rumor. A story. It's always the shock rockers, too. That's the thing. It it's, it's always these guys. Yeah. And the thing, that, that email, that away message, mm-hmm. the, that chain thing we just read, dude, that shit is still going on right now. I got to get on there all the time. I got all my 50-something-year-old friends and be like, you're sharing things that are not true. I yep. Get, I get, fact check them all I've, the time. I've seen you some I've seen you fact check some people yeah, before <laughs> I do it's it's because honestly people have such a low intellect mm-hmm. that they don't even think that 
I don't believe anything I read on the internet. No, I don't either. Well, I mean, a lot of people will just read the headline and assume it's true and not even read yeah, the article. They don't and just click share on the article. And, you, and they, you can completely mold and shape our society just with these headlines that people are reading. Yeah. And I, I feel like I'm doing them. I'm not trying to embarrass people. Mm-hmm. I think it really takes our generation to help educate the generation before us. Definitely. Who doesn't have the means, uh, the mental aptitude to perform it by themselves much like my i just told you my mom came over she mm-hmm. stopped she got a new car yeah super excited dude she's earned it i am a used car salesman's son through and through we've driven buckets our whole life <laughs> buckets that run good but we've driven buckets mm-hmm. and she's you know getting close to retirement and she deserves it she came over and she's like, look at my new car. She didn't have a fucking clue what anything did on it, dude. And I'm like, well, it does this and it does this and it does. I'm showing her all this stuff and she's getting so excited. The more and more I show her, but it felt good to help her. And I'm like, look, yeah. you just lay your phone down right here and it starts charging all by itself. She's like, oh my God. And I said, yes, good. Congratulations, mom. You deserve it. But it's up to us to kind of service the generation before us, to kind of save them from them fucking selves, you know, because... Without us, what? What the? F- they're just like uh, for Marilyn Manson, Kylan, Donald Trump. This is going to be a Donald Trump circuit. You watch in a couple days. This will be Donald Trump killing puppies, or <laughs> Joe Biden fucked a puppy, or <laughs> some stupid fucking shit. Um, just, we got to do our part to help kind of weed out the non-truths. But then also we got to be suspicious of what they tell us the truth actually is mm-hmm. because it's not always what it's portrayed to be. So it's a slippery, slippery slope, Rob. Oh, yeah. But next time your mom shares a meme of a golden retriever with ham on his face, <laughs> get on there and tell that bitch that picture is a fucking dog with ham on his face. That is not a dog that had its face burned off in a fire. All right. My wife, I asked her, I said, do you remember... Um, any schoolyard rumors from when you were a kid. And this is the first one that popped into her head. And I loved it, man, because I haven't thought about this in years. But she said, I always heard that if you flash your headlights to a passing car that has their headlights off, that is part of a gang initiation. Oh, yeah. And that anyone who flashes them will, they'll, they'll kill them. Mm-hmm. The, it says the origin <clears throat> this is from November of 2010, collected in an email. So this is, okay. No, th- we'll go even further back. This is from an email in 2005. Gang initiation weekend. Please read, very important. Police officers working with the D.A.R.E. program. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Dare to keep kid off drugs. Dare to keep kid off dope. <laughs> Help that, us. That thing was so fucking stupid. First off. We really need your hand. We were we were in fifth grade when that happened. I had never heard of drugs before. They not only told us the name of the drugs, they told us the street name of the drugs, how you inject these drugs, or how you ingest yeah. them. We had <laughs> we had the essay contest when I was in the fifth grade, and yeah. I wrote this essay. I half asked it, mm-hmm. and I remember the following week when Deputy Gray came up to me. He said, "Nick, <laughs> he, the same guy for you, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, like, tall, black haired dude. Yep." Like tiny cock, probably. <laughs> is probably. I don't know. He said, Nick, buddy, I got some good news for you. This is exactly how he talked to him. I said, What's up? He said, You won the you won the essay contest. You get the leather jacket. And I'm like, a <laughs> leather jacket. <laughs> All right. And you remember I was kind of fucking chunky Rob yeah. Dog. We've talked <laughs> about this on the show before. Right. He said, Um, I've got it right here if you want to try it on for the show, because we had a big show where we would read the essays. And uh, our parents would come and do all this stuff. And I said, heck yeah. And I look like Chris Farley trying to put on the fucking <laughs> fat guy no coat. And I'm like, I'm trying to put this coat on. And he's just like staying super calm and cool. He's like, Betty, I don't think it's going to fit you. I don't think it's going to fit you. I'm like, I'm going to get this fucking jacket on. I didn't fucking smoke crack rocks to get this motherfucker. And I couldn't get this leather jacket on, dude. And then he looked at it, he's like, I got an extra small. I didn't mean to get an extra small, buddy. And I was like, and he said, I don't have time to get another one. He's like, do you mind if I give this to somebody else? <laughs> and I said, I guess that's fine, because the second place 
was like a soccer, like a dare basketball or soccer balls, which I was excited for that. You know, right. I needed to get out and exercise anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the night of the show, he tells all these motherfuckers, Stephanie Nordscope <laughs> won the competition <laughs> after he told me earlier in the week that I had won. And he took it away from me simply because I was too fat. I couldn't fit the le- the pleather jacket on. He took it away from me. He gave it to her. He even took away you winning. Yeah, he did. He told. He didn't even say, well, he's too fat to not... <laughs> can't fit the jacket on his fat ass, so he had to find... It's like if John Daly won the Masters, or, you know, they got to put the jacket on him and it doesn't fit. Right. Like, well, we're going to give it a tiger because he can't, funny. can't fit, fit the jacket. So, Deputy Gray, if you're listening, I have done crack since then. <laughs> I've shot heroin in my dick hole. I've snorted marijuana. I've injected marijuana. I've snorted crack cocaine. I've sucked on air dusters. I've sucked on gas cans. Moon dust, snorted it off my wife's chest. All of it. Crickets, rickets, I've done <laughs> rickets. it all. I've, there's nothing that I haven't done, Deputy I got Gray. PCP in my foreskin. Exactly. And I said, and I asked him, I said, I want to be a cop one day. I want to be a cop. He said, go work at the jail. He's like, when you have to graduate high school, go work at the jail. And you went and did that, and it didn't fucking work out. Hell well. no. It sucked. It was yep. a fucking horrible gig, man. <laughs> yep. So Deputy Gray was wrong about a lot of stuff. <laughs> yes, he was. He was wrong about my coat size, and he's wrong with what he did to me. Hey, thank you for telling me all about marijuana, though. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> <laughs> Police officers working with the D.A.R.E. program has issued this warning. If you are driving after dark and see an oncoming car with no headlight on, do not flash your lights at them. This is a common Bloods gang member initiation game that goes like this. The new gang member under initiation drives along with no headlights, and the first car to flash their headlights at him is now his, quote, target he is now required to turn around and chase that car, then shoot and kill every individual in the fucking vehicle in order to complete his initiation requirements. Police departments across police depths, D-E-P-T-S, across the nation are being warned that September 23rd and 24th is the blood initiation weekend. Their intent is to have all the new bloods nationwide drive around on Friday and Saturday nights with their headlights off in order to be accepted into the gang. They have to shoot and kill all the individuals in the first auto that does a, excuse me, uh, does a courtesy flash to warn them that their headlights are off. Make sure you share this information with all your friends and family who are drivers. Okay. And I think that made us stronger growing up in an era, man, where we, we had to weed through the chain emails, kind of decide what was fucking shit and what wasn't, oh, wasn't definitely. shit. But this message goes as far back as 1998. Oh, wow. It's basically presented in the same exact wording. This is an email collected from 1998, and it's presented in the exact same wording as the one I just read from the 19 or 2005. There's a lot of, and don't get me wrong, there are gang initiations Mm -hmm. that happen every day in this country. I watched some really fucking bloody gang initiations when I worked in prison. Yeah. I watched some dudes get beat with rocks, stabbed, fucked, farted on, all the goody good goods. Blood in, blood out. All the juicy goods done to them during these gang initiations. And there is blood involved. Oh, yeah. For sure. Oh, yeah. And another one that kind of, another kind of similar thing I heard, and I've talked about this before the show. There was an urban legend going around when I was a kid that there was a, a, a serial stabber on the loose. And what do you do is he would lay under your vehicle. Oh, yeah. And when he when you approach your vehicle to get in your car, he had a fucking knife and he would just start stabbing people in the ankles and calves with with the knife when you would get up to your car. Ooh. Yeah. So oh. for a, that. Would hurt for one. Oh yeah, definitely. For two, I was chunky. I already told you that, Rob. Dog. Mm-hmm. I would bleed a lot. I would go down hard. So I didn't have a dare jacket to brace my fall when I would fall down and shit. So I would get like ten feet away from the car, and then I would run up and crack the door, open it, pull back, <laughs> take about ten steps back. Yeah, and then I would go like fucking Superman ice cream. I would dive into the car with the door open, just full on <laughs> sprint, and my dad would be like. What the fuck are you doing, you dumb shit? I'm like, 
I've been hearing some shit, Dad, about people <laughs> stabbing people under these cars. He said, what are you talking about? I said, I heard people were hiding under the cars and stabbing people in the, in the legs. In typical dad fashion, what I would say to my kids right now, he said, somebody tries some shit like that, I'm going to fuck them up. <laughs> <laughs> that's what i would say to my kids right yeah, now. It's yeah such yeah. a dad thing like they may have knives and shit but i'm gonna fuck them up <laughs> i'm gonna fuck them up so that didn't that, my father did nothing to make me feel better about the situation <laughs> i still would crack the doors and take off running you know when you and i were growing up we lived really close to this super sketchy kroger that's since yeah. closed mm-hmm. and i Always got the vibe like I was going to get stabbed in the legs when I went there. <sighs> Always tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That yeah, one was really sketchy. So I would always get a big old run and start there and yeah. jump in the car. I was always surprised every time I left there that I made it out alive. Yeah, dude. I knew where everything was at. I did a good job of getting around that place. Yeah. But I was kind of sad when they closed it because it was such a, you know, so many staples from my childhood right there in that, in that area. There was... Did you ever go to? You remember when there was Blockbuster next to it? Mm-hmm. Did you ever go to it when it was when it was Video Town? Yep. You did. Yep. Do you remember the arcade side Video Town? Yep. I used to tear that motherfucker up, dude. Yeah, man. I would go in there. I'd say, Dad, give me some quarters. He said, No. There's someone waiting in the parking lot. They're gonna stab you. I don't need to give you quarters. <laughs> but I would, uh, yeah, dude. And then it finally popped up about a block or a, a couple miles down the road. There was Video Tan. Yeah. Which that shows our age right there. There's a place revolutionary. People said it was going to change the industry. Half of the building was rental VHSs. Mm-hmm. They had the best wrestling selection there. But on the other half of the building, you could fucking tan your ass off. They had like 50 tanning beds. My mom would go tan, and my dad would shop for pornos, <laughs> and I would shop for wrestling videos. And I remember he would always go in the room in the back that said 18 and older, and mm-hmm. I would start to follow him. He'd be like, get the fuck out of here. And he'd push me back. <laughs> my mom's over there getting her tan on, you know, getting her shake and bake. Yep. My dad's rolling into the pornos, and I'm shopping for WrestleMania 3, 4, 5, and 6. Want to watch them for the 10th time each. That was the good times. And he would roll up out of the porno room. And I said, what you got? He said, doesn't fucking matter, does it? None of your goddamn business. You're just going to get stabbed out and die in the parking lot anyways. Got that brown paper bag special. Yeah. And I always I always wanted to go in the porno room. And I never, I never, could, I couldn't get in there. Yeah. I was always too scared. Shut down before you turned 18? <laughs> well, I, I went in there. I kind of creeped in there once. And I saw how big one of the dicks was on <laughs> the front of the, co- the cover. And I said... I got nothing for that. I got, this is not a place for me. My dick is smaller than the head of that dick. I, have, I am in the wrong territory. Do you guys have a room like for small dicks? <laughs> this is not a this is not a big dick situation. I'm trying to yeah. So that's a little look see into our childhood. And this is another one right here, man. Oh yeah, pull it up. Yeah, Mountain Dew will shrink your balls. I'm just, that's what I'm fucking drinking right now. I'm <laughs> hoping for that to come around one day. <laughs> so, origins. Maybe that's what's wrong with us, man. We talked to those big guys that were at my house a few weeks ago. Uh-huh. I talk about how big their balls were and how they had slinky into the toilet fucking water. No, yeah, yeah. Them, uh, they were too poor to have Mountain Dew drinking up. We were, <laughs> our mom and dads are hardworking Americans. We had Mountain yeah. Dew. Moon Mist won't do that, but Mountain Dew will. <laughs> Moon Mist. <laughs> fucking Mountain Lightning. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so wild rumors like this one quoted above about a popular brand of lemon lime soda have been circulating for several years now. The first clue to its questionable veracity is the variety of reported events. Drinking Mountain Dew will shrink your testicles or de- decrease your sperm count, which I'm totally fine with, Take or all. cause your penis to grow smaller. Maybe that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever occurs, it only happens to guys, and it hits them below the belt, right? Sounds a lot like the early 90s legend that claimed tropical fantasy brand soft drinks contained a secret ingredient to cause sterility in black male drinkers, Holy doesn't it? Holy shit, dude. I'd never heard about that one. Now, what the fuck is that. tropical fantasy? I want some of that shit. <laughs> right. We have in the vending machine of my work, we have uh, Tahitian Treat, the fruit punch. Okay, yeah. That's good shit, dude. That sounds good. Yep. So uh, these rumors are primarily spread about PepsiCo's Mountain Dew soft drink, although it has been told about Mellow Yellow, and that is a uh, Coca-Cola product, <laughs> which is still available. Has dude, been, Mellow, Mellow Yellow hits. It really does, oh, yeah. It does. Um, the key factor in this is the presence of a dye called Yellow Number no. 5. That's <laughs> no problem about that. In these drinks, a um, food coloring that allegedly has nasty effects on one's manhood 
Uh, yellow number five, also known as Tartrazine, is an F, D, and C. Um, let me see here. Coloring dye commonly used to give various foods, such as beverages, ice cream, and candy, a uh, bright yellow color, bright yellow lemon color. Uh, okay. It has long since been deemed safe by the Food Drug Administration, and it has also been used since 1916. So if we're shrinking wieners and balls, we probably have heard something more than rumors by now. Um, many other common food products contain yellow number five as well, so more than just Mountain Dew drinkers would notice the effect if it were real. What's your experiences with drinking Mountain Dew? Do you feel like you have a much smaller dick and sack because of drinking Mountain Dew? No, but it did give me a bunch of cavities. <laughs> yeah. Mountain Dew teeth. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a thing. That's a real word. We did a... Um, it's it's in my family. We call it hillbilly wedding kiss. Yeah, yeah. You just yeah. make out and you dump Mountain Dew between your mouths. Mm-hmm. We do that on our family. My, I still, I did it with to congratulate my mom on her new car. It's <laughs> Mountain Dew is harmless. Okay, yeah. my parents used to put Mountain Dew in my bottle when I was a kid. Uh, we used to bong it out of uh, oil funnels in the garage. Mountain Dew is completely harmless. Yeah, it's uh. It's to the point now where we consume so much of it at the house that our kitchen sink is just hooked up to a syrup bag. <laughs> so we have it on tap. You guys don't even need the carbonation. <laughs> we don't, you know, we suck you it just drink the, the syrup. <laughs> yeah. I put the Mountain Dew syrup on my waffles. <laughs> oh, man. Dude, but that's delightful. Yeah, it's really good. I really enjoy it. <laughs> Especially if it's Baja. Really gets the cardiovascular going. <laughs> exactly. And I don't have anything here. No, no uh, links. But quickly approaching is Halloween mm-hmm. time. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of stuff circul- that that kind of surrounds Halloween time. And one of the scariest ones for me, one of the most uncomfortable thoughts that I deal with, is the thought of someone placing razor blades inside of apples. Oh yeah. And I see my entire life I've had this problem. I can feel that guy under the car stabbing me in the ankles. <laughs> I can feel biting into that apple with the razor blades. I can feel sand between my teeth even even if I think about it. Mm-hmm. I can feel stuff just from the thought of it. Like when someone like talks about chewing on aluminum foil, I want to stick my penis in a light socket and die because <laughs> I can feel it, you know? And much like the, the razor blades and... And uh, in the apples, I can feel that. And just my whole entire life, I've been so terrified of uh, happening upon that situation of razor blades in apples. Mm-hmm. Do you do you have any Halloween weird Halloween uh, kind of myths that you can think of off the top of your head? Um, no. I mean, pretty much that that the uh, uh, razor blades or needles or. Something yeah. in, in candy. Um, I'm more scared of getting pennies instead of candy. <laughs> that's, take, that's just as terrifying. What candies do you immediately abduct from your children when you open up their bags? Um, right off the bat, I will take... You get three of them. Only three. Hmm. Okay, so if I see... Shit, man. I know it is for me. <clears throat> Paydays. Okay. Baby Ruth's. And then usually the cookies and cream Hershey's. Okay. I'll abduct the small bag of M&M's. Uh, peanut or plain doesn't really matter. Okay. Um, small, the Snickers, I'll take those because Snickers are the shit. Yeah, they are. And I'll take the Easy sh- Cups too. It's a toss up between, I, I'm a big Kit Kat fan too. Oh, okay, yeah. Kit Kat's delicious. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That or uh, the Milky Ways. Oh, yeah. I'll do those too. That's delicious. Our friend Nick Perkins, he uh, submitted this on the Facebook page. He said, what about Richard Gere and the gerbil in his butt? Which I heard, I always thought it was Tom Selleck with the gerbil in his butt. But apparently the rumor was Richard Gere was taken to a hospital emergency room to have a gerbil removed from his rectum. <laughs> okay. Good for him. An exciting night. The following is a true account. A 26-year-old male arrives at the ER complaining of rectal bleeding. He is too embarrassed to provide an accurate history, but provides the examining doctor a clue. Quote, there might be something stuck in my rear end. Examination reveals a non-tender abdomen, but a rectal exam shows blood coming from his anus. A speculum exam. Isn't that where they put the quacker in your butt? (laughs) The quacker. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> the asshole stretcher. Yeah, dude. When we, I used to go to my wife's uh, appointments for the babies and shit. <laughs> the they, would, they would lay it out, and I'd see it, and I'd go, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> <laughs> talk to her, get all fucking. That's what we call it, the quacker. The quacker. I put the quacker in my rear end. <laughs> Examination reveals a non tender abdomen, but a rectal exam shows blood coming from his anus. A speculum exam, that's the quacker, reveals bloody stool and a dead gerbil. Aww. Apparently, through the cardboard tubing from a paper towel roll, the rodent had been forced into his rectum. Once this animal was in, the tube was pulled out. The idea is that as the gerbil suffocates, it Ugh. scratches and claws at the lining of the rectum, providing an intense sensation to the patient. The rodent should have been the the rodent should then have been defecated, but the swelling and bleeding had caused the retention of the animal. Uh. The patient required medication and antibiotics after the animal was removed but then was allowed to go home wow yeah and the rumor was that richard gear was the one that um this shit happened to him huh. and i want to know if there's anybody listening that's ever shoved a gerbil up their ass i've never thought or any any live in animal and hopefully it made it out alive but if you've ever had anything <laughs> up your butt including an octopus send us an email bro i have a podcast or a quacker <laughs> if you've ever had a quacker in your ass <laughs> Send us an email, bro. Let's know how that went. Uh, but yeah, this was pretty. This was surrounding a lot of rock stars, but mostly it was associated with Richard Gere. Okay. Um, oh, good for rumors are spread by uh, and aided by an anonymous. My fucking browser just went crazy right there. Prankster, who not long after the film, Pretty Woman led to a tremendous increase in Gears' popularity, flooded fax machines in Hollywood with a <laughs> phony press release purportedly issued by the Association for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals claiming that Gear had abused a gerbil. <laughs> <laughs> you know how to successfully get a gerbil out of your butt? Nope. You just fucking launch it out just like a turd, dude. <laughs> okay. It's not hard to do, believe me. Makes sense. So did you um do you recall this rumor growing up about Richard Gere having no. a gerbil in his butt? No. I absolutely remember this one. Do you? Yeah. That's yep. Not me. Uh Nick Perkins, thanks for submitting that one. That was false as well. That was a that one was made up. It makes sense. The the sheer fact that they cited the the uh the rodent trying to claw and escape was Ugh. the means for ecstasy. That's uh, that's a little weird for me. That just doesn't sound pleasurable. Yeah. And any time we go to a pet store, I always say, you guys got any gerbils? And I ask in a really weird way, and my wife's like, will you shut the fuck up? <laughs> just quit being a douchebag. <laughs> she hits me with a Joe Biden. She says, would you shut up, man? <laughs> I'm just like, you know, I am who I am, and this is what I do, and it's never going to change. Raul Umana. He said one rumor that he specifically remembers as a child is his fucking parents always used to tell him that it was illegal to turn on the dome lights. I tell my kids that. Oh, really? <laughs> yes, I do. You still hit him with it? Yes, I do. But we kind of live in a, it's a different era now. We don't need the, as the kids don't need dome lights. They got candles oh. and touch screens. And- yeah, they'll drive down the road and they'll have it on and I'm like. I'm like, are you trying to get me arrested? <laughs> That's such a dad thing to say. <laughs> like, turn that shit off. I just got these brand new white New Balances, and you guys are trying to get me sent to jail. <laughs> That's good stuff. Yeah, man, I love I love that one. I'm, that's a keeper. My dad, uh, he used to tell me the same thing. But then also, I was talking to him about, I can't remember if I talked about this in the last episode or not. He said that, uh, I said, I've never been to Pigeon Forge. He said, yeah, we went when you were a kid. Mm-hmm. You were up walking around the fucking club van waving at a police officer that was next to us <laughs> and, um, i got pulled over and i got a ticket so damn it yeah and that kind of goes along with trying to manage children in a vehicle is, especially if they know Oof. how to escape their car seats yeah it's rough i do not like it one bit yeah my my wife got a ticket for that one time because my son oldest son now but this is when he was the only kid he was going through the the phase where he would always take his seatbelt off Oh, he was he was a seatbelt clicker. <laughs> so, so he uh, yeah, use the quacker on him. <laughs> <laughs> she picked him up from school one day, and she made sure he was in his seat. And as she was pulling out, there was 
they had police officers escorting cars out because it's a busy road. And he stands up. He had taken his seatbelt off, and she didn't know. <laughs> and he was, like, waving, and the same exact thing happened. They got pulled over, and they were like, yeah, there's people that were saying he was out of his seat and blah, blah. And uh, oh, she was shit. like, no, I put him in his seat. And then she looked back, and he was he was sitting oh, in his seat, but he didn't have his seatbelt on. What a jerk. Yeah, so he got she got in trouble, too. So You got to take that out of it. Like, when he goes to get his first car, and he's like, Dad, I got $2,000 saved up. you like... You got seventeen hundred and twenty <laughs> saved up, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, you're still paying me for that ticket, buddy. <laughs> That's good living. So, uh, Raul, thanks for that submission. Definitely something both of us deal with. Oh yeah. Still, my kids, um, they don't do it, so I don't have to yell at them about that one. Next one's from J.C. Campbell. J.C. says peeing in the pool changes the water colors. Oh yeah. That was. Oh, I was talk about public humiliation when mm-hmm. you're fucking 12, 13 years old. Yeah. There ain't a pool in this state that delicious Nicolicious ain't peed in. <laughs> Rob Dog, we've swam the same pool before. I've pissed in that pool before. Yep. I uh, I will go out of my way to get in the pool to piss. I will walk past five bathrooms. Hell yeah. To get much like, I think... If you have if you have good aim, I believe pissing in the shower is acceptable as a man as well. If Absolutely. You, if you can hold it going right into the drain, not pissing all over that motherfucker like a you know like a slip and slide, not spreading enzymes all over it, all nasty and shit. Mm-hmm. Sometimes when me and my wife get in an argument, I'll just piss all over her feet in the shower because <laughs> she doesn't know. No, I, they say pissing in the sink is good for the environment too. It doesn't waste water when you flush. Oh my god! So go, go home to your wife or girlfriend when she's in the bathroom, piss in the sink, or piss in the sink where your dirty dishes are. Let us know how that Make goes. Make sure you close the plug before you piss, though. You <laughs> yeah. want it to be really stagnant. Oh god, There's nothing better than the smell of stagnant Ugh. piss. Dude, if my wife called me piss in the shower, she would hit me with a fucking crowbar <laughs> in the jaw, knock my teeth out, and kill me. It would be lights out. Then my mom would come shit on my lifeless corpse because she taught me better than that. Now I always piss in the shower. I don't care. <laughs> I like to piss in other people's showers. Even, even if she's in there, I'd be like, oh, better watch your feet. I got to piss. I like it. And I'll just let it rip. <laughs> I go to people's houses, <laughs> and I don't even take a shower. I just pull back the curtain and piss in the shower. <laughs> Power move. <laughs> it's really, my house yeah, now. <laughs> you go to upper deck them. No, you just pull back that fucking stinky-ass <laughs> shower curtain. Usually when I take a shit, it smells so bad, you got to change the shower curtain anyways. <laughs> You just got to pull that curtain back and take a big old fucking stinky Mountain Dew piss. Oh, yeah. I got little balls. I'm pissing in the shower. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Does urine, is, uh, is there a chemical that exists that is urine revealing? Uh, no matter. In 1958, I spent two weeks visiting my father in Sacramento, California. At the YMCA pool, I was told by fellow children that this chemical color was red was in the water. I was told the horrible embarrassment of being discovered peeing in the water had happened to a (laughs) FOAF only last week. I never tried it out, obviously too terrified to even think of it. Never saw red stains on the water either. So there's a lot of, um, and I think that, yeah, man, I've heard this one a lot. I I always feared this. I always thought, I remember we have a friend, he has a prestigious rap studio, but his friends would house sit for a really rich lawyer in the area and then i always got amped up to fucking do that shit because we would get to go stay the house it, we could stay the weekend at this lawyer's fucking nice uh, house boat, this homestead dude yeah. and it was so nice and he had a really nice like pool surrounding cobblestone with all kinds of nice lights around it and i would always have to psych myself up before i get in that pool i say i'm gonna piss in this motherfucker <laughs> but i know this guy's got money he's got a goddamn shark in the living room I know he's got money. Everybody's going to know when I piss in this motherfucker. But I would, all, I would hop in there with my my dick pushed up against the net of my shorts, and I'd piss, and that never happened. So I think of all the places that would be the least safest to piss in the water and be caught, that was probably the place, and it never happened. And there, and there is no such chemical. I can't wait till the day that there is. <laughs> You, all these people just think like, oh, that'll never, yeah. it's not a thing, and then they do yeah. and let it rip. You know, when I was a kid, there was a rumor going around that if you ever, Dad! <laughs> oh, Dad! <laughs> Up, 
yep, I pissed. <laughs> I mean, if you were in a public pool anyways, and if it did, the whole entire fucking pool would be red. Oh, yeah. Everybody's it, pissing like in the pool. Fucking shark attack. I was always under the interpretation that it was uh, more of like a bluish purple compound that would... I thought it was blue, too. Yeah. yeah. But in this one, it's red, which is even more terrifying. Mm-hmm. But yeah, in the movie Grown Ups, he pisses yeah. in the pool and it's blue. Yep. <laughs> like purple. Well, we... Um, started to watch, and I'll make this recommendation, on Netflix, Hubie, Hubie's Halloween. It's one of those Adam Sandler movies where he calls all of his friends, and they all show up for the movie, Kevin James, and I'm only like 45 minutes into this movie. But the opening scene is the fucking orderly from Adam Sa- from Happy Gilmore. He's oh, yeah. Like, Look at the name tag. You're in my world. And it's the opening scene is him working as an orderly again. And uh, what's his What's his name? Uh, who, who plays that guy? Ben Stiller. Yeah. He has not aged at all, man. No. He hasn't aged at all. But it's a really, really funny movie. You guys should definitely check out Hubie's. Okay. Hubie's Halloween. It's funny. Lots of little, uh, lots of little old, if you're an Adam Sandler fan from, you know, kind of the beginning, Billy Madison. Uh, the glory days. From all the way from, <clears throat> you'll like this movie. There's fucking kids in it, and they're the O'Doyles. So, it's it's a throwback to all of his kind of his old That's pretty movies, cool. for sure. What's this next one, Rob Dog? Uh the Wizard of Oz Munchkin who kills himself. This is from Jeff Walnoff Walnoffer. Yeah. So one of the most ubiquitous of film legends holds that a munchkin hanged himself on camera during the filming of The Wizard of Oz. I swore I've seen it, dude. I uh, yeah, I think I've seen it before too, but it's Rated here as false, so um, the so-called Munchkin suicide scene in the 1939 MGM film The Wizard of Oz occurs at the very end of the Ten Woodsman sequence, as Dorothy, the Scarecrow, and the Ten—I'm not going to say Woodsman, that's stupid—the Tin Man head down the road on their way to Emerald City. The sequence begins with Dorothy and Scarecrow trying to pick a fruit from the apple tree. Um, encompasses their discovery of the rusted Tin Man and the encounter with the Wicked Witch of the West. And then ends with the trio heading off to Oz to search for the wizard. Um, let's see here. It does. They do say that no one, Munchkin or otherwise, actually died on the set during the filming of the cinematic I classic. I saw it. Much less in a cut that was used for the finished version of the movie. Um, let's see here. I'm trying to see if it, this gives us a explanation because you can definitely see something. I remember seeing it. Uh, there's like a it's a in the later movies it looks like a bird standing up and swinging its head out like yeah that's what that's bird what with a long neck that's what this is at the very end of the sequence as the three main characters move down the road away from the camera one of the larger birds often said to be an emu but probably more or probably a crane it's a dead munchkin yes yeah, standing at the back of the set moves around and spreads its wings no munchkin no hanging just a big fucking bird. <laughs> you believe it? Uh, nope. I think it was a munchkin. He was a dead little person. <laughs> We're going to stop and pause and go get some food. Heck yeah. it's, it's ready. Sure. So I'm going to go get it. All right. We're back. We had uh, one and a half beef shredded chimichangas each. Mm-hmm. Cheese. Lettuce. Delightful. Sour cream. We, we decided to spare you guys the uh, agony of listening to us eat. So Yeah. No, I'm going to be pulling out of my teeth for a little bit. Yeah, so they yeah, already hear it. Yep. And since we had, um, this goes along with our next one right here. It does. We had a nice Mexican dish. Now we have a a, a story from our from Me- uh, Megan Juarez Fontana. She said from her Mexican Mexican side of her family, they always told her when uh, she said when she was growing up that if she was ever pregnant during an eclipse, that she had to wear red or something bad would happen to the baby. Huh. Uh, and then I she forwarded this research that says the Aztecs thought that an eclipse was a bite on the face of the moon, according to Baby Center. If a mother watched the bite, the same thing would happen to her baby, you know, allegedly. So for protection, the mother is warned to carry something metallic, such as a safety pin, and wear it close to the unborn child, um, if that makes huh. sense at all. Very bizarre. Yeah. I've never heard that before. Oh, I mean, we're not Mexican, but still. Well, but we did have to have a gallon of semen pumped out of our stomachs. <laughs> That's very true. At, uh, and it could have been from a Mexican. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> we'll let you have this next one. Uh, let's see. What do we got? Uh, Mark, Mark Lepley. Okay, Mark Lepley. People, said, people used to say if you punch someone in the armpit, that person would shit themselves. <laughs> let's try it. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's the dumbest fucking thing. <laughs> Thank you, Mark, for that one. It's so fucking stupid. So funny. In what situation would you be able to just punch someone in the armpit? <laughs> Someone's, so we used to play the kidney game where we yeah. would punch each other in the kidneys, but I guess where her fuck Mark was from, <laughs> they used to punch each other in the armpit and it would... It would spur some kind of reaction where they'd poop their pants. <laughs> if you ever shit yourself from being punched in the armpit, let us know. <laughs> no matter of fact. People used to say if you punch someone in the armpit, that person would shit themselves. <laughs> I've never heard that ever, but I've... I no, that's funny, though. I'm going to punch all my kids in the armpit tonight and see if they even poop their pants. The weakest one has to clean up all the shit. <laughs> Just punch them in the armpit while they're sleeping. What are you doing? <laughs> Um, and I was trying to get my wife to do it the other night. I want to do the trick where we put their hands in hot water and try mm-hmm. and get them to piss herself. She yep. wouldn't let me do it. Oh, that's so, a bummer. Yeah. <clears throat> Living with me is not fun. <laughs> uh, Nicholas Crowley says the old rumor that if you try and hold a sneeze or if you sneeze and try and hold your eyeballs open at the yeah. same time, your eyeballs <laughs> will f- will pop out of your head. And I know there are, there are people with conditions where their fucking eyeballs will pop yeah, out of your skulls, yeah, yeah. but I've physically held my eyelids all the way open and sneezed and my eyeballs didn't no. jump out of my fat head. I actually just saw a video the other day where a guy's sitting in the chair and he keeps his eyes open on his own and sneezes. Oh, and really? Yeah. He doesn't even use his hands. He just... <laughs> and everybody just starts dying laughing because he looks so funny because his eyes were so big. <laughs> but yeah, they didn't pop out. That's awesome. Man. I think that would have made it even funner. <laughs> I, I'm a... Uh... Oh, shit. That's one of my favorite things to do is take a marble with me to the bathroom oh, yeah. and drop it like, ah, oh, my fucking eye. <laughs> this next one uh, comes from our friend Corey Lynn Keith. Uh, Corey says that there's a there was an old urban legend about a girl in uh, a co-ed impaling herself with a broom while pleasuring herself. It's always them pesky co-eds. I've heard, I've heard this one before. Have you heard this one? No, I haven't. Okay. And that's why... Um, it's kind of sexy, though. Before, you know, before I would... Uh, before I knew what the fuck I was talking about, uh-huh. we had a really close group of girlfriends. Not, not like girlfriends, but friends that we were girls with. Yeah, we yeah. Kind of joke around with like they were, you know, there's, we were just all super close friends. Mm-hmm. And we would all, I would always find myself with them at grocery store, wherever we would run errands with them. And this is like before I knew anything about, you know, sex, sex. Right. And I would hold up anything that looked like a dick, a cucumber or whatever, a fucking squash, a sweet potato. I'm like, oh, how's this one look? Like like it was supposed to fucking turn them on or something. They're like, what are you fucking talking about? And this story, the story that says, the legend says that a co-ed died while pleasuring herself with a broom. Mm-hmm. Um... This is collected from an email in 1990 of nine... It says, the story that I heard was kind of like the hot dog one, was that there was this girl who got drunk at a party, then she went home and she was really horny, so she used a broomstick to pleasure herself. She was standing on the table for some reason, and her mom walked in on her, she jumped off the table, and the broomstick went up her and killed and, oh. and killed her. I doubt this is true, but the girl just told me that. Oh, man. And I want to know what the hot dog story is they reference right there, <laughs> that kind of... Uh, uh, it says, my friend's dad was the director of one of our local hospitals. One day after coming home from work, he told his son about something that had happened that day, even though it was supposedly confidential. He said a gay male had been admitted to the hospital that day. The problem was the guy trying to get off rigged up the sex toy type thing. It supposedly consisted of several pulleys attached to the ceiling and a broom, which nice. was inserted in the rectum. That sounds like the wow. Yeah. The <laughs> idea was when the guy who was suspended from the ceiling or something Pulled on one rope, the broom would pleasure him, but then something went <laughs> terribly wrong, and it broke, sending the broom up the mm. rectum and through his stomach. Later, family or friends found him, embarrassing, I'm sure, hanging there with a broom stuck in his butt. Oh. I heard the oh. one. I heard that version of it. That that's the one I heard growing up. Not the female co-ed. It was always yeah. the uh, the guy doing it with the broomstick. Oof. But this is uh, this is said to be a legend. This is not true. I'm sure this has happened before. Oh, here, if you go down a little bit further with the picture of the broom, that tells you the hot dog story right there. Our 1998 article about the hapless hot dog lover, <laughs> teen girl who pleasures herself with a frozen wiener, has to be taken to hot spittle to have the hot dog fished out a process that serves to bring solitary activity to light, prompted many of our readers 
to ask about a related tale of masturbatory misadventure, including uh, involving a broom. So I guess there was a fucking story. frozen frozen wiener in her snatch. Frozen hot dog. <laughs> that would be refreshing. Yeah, crisp, delightful. You can eat it when you're done. Hot dogs are delicious, cold or hot. It right, exactly. Really matter. Actually, cold hot dogs make me fucking gag. Before you people <laughs> viscerate me and tell me I'm a piece of shit, I think cold hot dogs are fucking disgusting. Yeah, they are bad. It's really bad. It's like rolled up bologna that was pushed out of someone's butt. <laughs> Here, eat this hot dog. We pumped it out of fucking Elton John's belly. <laughs> not true. That legend is not true. No. I'll let Rob talk about this next one from our friend Medine. Medine? Medine? Yeah, Medine Jones. Yeah. Medine. Medine. I think it's Medine. Um, that singer from Corn, Jonathan Davis, got AIDS from his dad. That's kind of fucked up. Way to go, way to go, Dad. Do um, they did have the the last song on their first album called Daddy. Um, that was about him getting sexually assaulted as a kid. I do believe. Um, yeah, and I think you said it was from a family friend, someone who watched him. Yeah, the story goes it was a. He says that it was a family friend. Uh, it was uh, almost a father figure. Babysitter. But he was doing it, and he was telling his mom and dad. Yeah, and they didn't believe him. And they said, no, we're not buying that. So that's kind of where that rumor came from. Yeah, I remember the first time I heard that song was a kid. I think that song fucked me up. Yeah. I didn't listen to it for a while because it was... The, the other rumor that I remember, and I don't know if this is true, but whenever they wrote the song and they were recording it, I remember, him, I remember hearing that he told the band, you know, I'm going to get super emotional on this song so whatever you do just keep playing yeah and i'm just gonna keep going wow dude he's another he's another one right there on the same level as uh marilyn manson just kind of a different yeah. dude kind of marches to the beat of his own drum i love that guy though i yeah. think he's uh really got a lot of dimensions to him he's a he's a he's a cool dude i used to be all about corn back in the day right, that's what i was about to say you were a huge corn fan yeah up, I, in, up until issues i think that's the last album of theirs i listened to i still listen to him yeah i still um, get down with him I I really liked issues. That's that's the last one I listened to, but I just kind of grew out of that music. But yeah, um, yeah, that's a really good album. It doesn't get enough credit as a shit. It's really dark and fun. I remember when we were uh, eighth grade taking classical guitar. Me and Rob were in the same class taking yeah. classical guitar, and we're learning like Ode to Joy. Ode to Joy. Dun, yeah. dun 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 dun. And then one Still day, remember how to play that. And then one day Rob comes in and he's like. Dun, dun, I said, what the fuck is that? He's like, you know, you don't have to just play these. There's like other guitar songs. And from that moment on, I was like, yeah, I got to fucking learn these other guitar songs because I'm tired of playing Bach and shit. And then you learn like parts of every song ever. Right. Every every (laughs) song that was on the Every main riff of uh, any (laughs) song that ever existed. Yeah. I would sit on top of an amplifier (laughs) in the stairway because I didn't, I was too stupid to carry the amplifier (laughs) up the steps. And I would practice every riff to every uncle cracker song in the entire world i can still play uh follow me like it's like i'm lead guitar player it's funny cause i was playing that the other day too <laughs> i was just fucking around it's a good one yeah the next one is from uh emma zeiniger she says <laughs> wait what did you say zeiniger Zeiner, Zeiner, I don't know how to say this, German for sure. He definitely had a lot of potato pancakes. She says, uh, Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln, was buried with a wooden dildo in his ass. I, and I had to do some, uh, why, why would it just be a wooden dildo? I had to uh, uh, look into this, because all these I looked into. I had to look into Abraham Lincoln's ass. And I had to find, I'm like, is there really a fucking did he (laughs) is this a thing but after going a little further um there is a creepy pasta okay about abraham lincoln where he was widely considered to be the first modern vibrator connoisseur back then okay people were mostly into dildos but when abe lincoln took a piece of wood hollowed it out sanded it down filled it with bees and sealed it with wax it was <laughs> love at first sight <laughs> he filled it with bees yep. that was a you was a dildo connoisseur <laughs> he was a vibrator connoisseur he filled a fucking he hollowed the wood out and filled it full of bees and <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> Did you imagine him sitting on that fat boy like, oh, four scores, and oh, that feels great. Made his mole twitch. Oh, God, someone shoot me in the fucking head. 
No, don't do that. Ooh. Don't do that, John. <laughs> you fucking dick. <laughs> yeah, but that's a creepy pasta I got. I stumbled upon where he's <laughs> okay. He would um when he would when the, when the wax would melt, it would release the fury of the bees. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> seal the fucking bees. In the... We got to try that, dude. <laughs> that's crazy. That's a good idea. I hope that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he did kill vampires, too, so I mean. Yeah, dude. He was definitely, and I I love that movie. That's that's so good. That was a good, such a cool story. Yeah. This next <laughs> one is our uh, last one. Emil, Emil Betty or Emil Bedai. I'm not sure. Probably Betty. There is a. And I had to look far and wide for this one. It's a story about, <laughs> he said, Skittles that were found in a woman's vagina. Okay. The The main story here is a Starburst-based story. I'm never, eating them either way. I never heard that. Well, you're not eating this one, dude. <laughs> me, the story goes, so I was at a small party last week. At one point, we were all sitting around in a circle, drunk as fuck, and sharing our funniest sex story. This one guy asks if he can tell a story about his friend, so he does, and as soon as he was done, I was like, I have to post this shit on Reddit. Oh, my God. Anyway, this is how it went. <laughs> so his friend, let's call, and it's cool how the stories change generations. So uh-huh. Reddit has so many off-the-wall fucking things. So his friend, let's call him Jack, and his girlfriend at the time wanted to spice up their sex lives, and so the girl, let's call her Amy, was like, hey, let's try something new, and Jack was pretty interested and open to anything, so Amy pulls out a roll of Starburst she had bought early that day and says, you should totally eat these out of my vagina. <laughs> Sign me up. Yeah. At first it was like total joke, but after a while they decided to do it because fuck it, why not try? So time goes by and Jack ends up eating a total of eight Starbursts out of her vagina, one by one. When he was describing the taste to my friend, he said it was fine, but after a while there was one, especially that just tasted fucking <laughs> gross. <laughs> oh, God, dude. Oh. Okay, so a couple days go by, and Amy calls Jack and says, Dude, I just found a Starburst in my vagina. I don't think you ate all of them. And Jack goes, That's impossible. I ate all eight. We counted them. So it turns out that the one Starburst that tasted really bad was actually a star was wasn't actually a starburst at all. It was a herpes ball. <laughs> God, yeah, I've I've heard this I, before. Fucking puke. I didn't know that it was possible to get herpes balls inside your vagina, but apparently it's a thing. Anyway, if you've been wanting to try food play, keep it external, folks. <laughs> you still want to eat some fucking skittles? Yeah, I've I've heard of that before. That is rancid. Yeah, I will never do that. Unless my dad is really forceful, then we might talk about it, but uh, I am not doing that. A herpes ball. <laughs> if you have herpes balls, send us an email, Brio, podcast at gmail.com. Not herpes on your balls. We'd love to hear your unfortunate story. No, we want to hear those. We, we want to hear those, too. Okay. If you send us an email, we'll read your name live on the air, in, on the air talking about your, your herpes. <laughs> and while you're all listening, leave us a five-star review on Apple iTunes. Yeah. If, not a lot. if you can incorporate the word chocolate and pickle into your review, we will give you a special shout out in the next episode. Oh, okay. So if you can incorporate the word chocolate and pickle in your review, just say Rob loves to suck the chocolate pickles. Or whatever. Sure. Whatever you want to say. If you can incorporate chocolate and pickle into your review, we're going to give you a special shout out. So make sure you follow it up with, <laughs> hey, this is... Dan from Dayton, or wherever, whoever you want to be, <laughs> however you want your name read, make sure you leave it there so we can give you a special shout out in the next episode. Chocolate pickle. Rob knows all about the chocolate pickle. Love me a chocolate pickle. So what'd you think, man? What do you think of this episode? Um, I thought it was great. I, I love it. I thought it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Very little research. Yeah. Mostly just us talking shit. I'm, I'm down with it. Talking about cool stuff. I remember a lot of these. Mm-hmm. Hold on, I'm going to go upstairs as soon as we're done here and tell my kids all these stories <laughs> so they can go spread these like wildfire at school today. Um, one that I do remember that we didn't have on here that I said about talked about earlier, I remember hearing that um, the Blue Ranger off Power Rangers killed himself because he was bullied after... I heard that because he was well. gay, Because he was gay. Yeah. Billy. Yeah. David Yost is his name. I heard that one too. But he's still alive. He is... 
very gay, very, and he was bullied on the set. Very active in the Comic Con, uh, yeah, scene as well. Him and Jason David Frank, David, yeah, Jason David Frank, yep, the White Ranger, yeah, super good. He's an dude. MMA fighter too. Yeah, Power Rangers were the shit, man. They were <clears throat> a lot of uh, a lot of memories watching Power Rangers. So, if you guys can remember any cool myth, rumors, legends, schoolyard tales from whenever you were a kid, and you want us to read them. You can add us, Brohio Podcast, anywhere you can at Brohio Podcast or send us an email, Brohio Podcast at gmail.com. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Yeah. I really enjoyed the chimichangas. They're really good. They were delicious. I think we're going to talk to you guys soon. In the meantime, you guys keep it tight. (laughs) Keep it right. Keep it tight. Love you.